Okay, so you've got your stream deck, you've done the basics, you're now looking for more complicated, lesser known things that you can do with this bad boy. In this video, I'm going to be going through seven different tips of the lesser known things that you can do with your stream deck, hopefully in time for your next stream. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Okay, so the way I'm going to work this is the first few tips are going to be fairly simple and straightforward. We're going to get into some more complicated tips in the middle, and then we're going to finish on some nice, cool, but still quite simple and straightforward tips. So we've got like a complicated sandwich. That's a really bad analogy, but that's what I'm going to do, okay? So tip number one, quite simple and straightforward. If you go on elgato.com forward slash en forward slash key creator, it's a free tool where you can upload keys and create customized keys. There's all kinds of presets, but it's the wallpaper mode here that I'm concerned with. When you click on this, you can select the size of Stream Deck that you have, and you can upload one image here, and it will make keys for all of those images on your keypad. So basically, you can have one big image spanning the length and breadth of all of your keys, no matter what size stream deck you actually have you simply click on this picture to locate the image that you want once you've found your image you click open on that and it will place that image and at this point you can start resizing and making tweaks once you're happy with them you basically want to click on save wallpaper that will save it as a zip file and every single one of those icons will be available here's a preview of what my current one looks like it actually does need to be updated with my new logo now the key to this is to make sure that you're using hotkeys with no hotkey assigned to them so that the wallpaper doesn't actually do anything and then have one that is a folder you can see here this is a folder and that's the one that you can jump into where all the rest of your buttons will be and then you simply click on the button itself click the down button here and you can set from file quick tip here if you windows and left on the keypad it'll put this on the left hand side of your window then click onto here or wherever you've located the files windows and right you can basically drag them over a lot quicker you're welcome i just saved you five minutes of time there okay tip number two now the keener eyed people would have seen then that i've got this folder here called get Games. You can actually play games on your stream deck. I know it blew my mind when I found that out as well But there's literally games available that you can install through the Elgato app store and play them on your stream deck So you can literally play them on stream if you want or just mess around when you're just killing time to do this We need to go to the app store we need to go onto the plugins tab here and we just do a search for games. Now, what we're searching for here is the Bar Raider Stream Deck Games. Now, Bar Raider, we'll get into a little bit more detail about this developer because he's got loads of really good Stream Deck plugins and we'll be covering one or two more of these. But what you need to do is you'll hit install on that and it will install it to the Stream Deck. Once it's installed, go down to this game tab here click onto it and you can drag the game on as an icon. Then once you're in, you simply just need to press the button on your Stream Deck and the game will launch. And you've got a left and right arrow, which you need to press on your stream deck. <laughs> Block breaker. And then you can literally play the game. It's kind of slow though. This particular one is like very easy. Block breaker. This is what gaming was actually like in the 80s and 90s. Quick click through the games. We've got an eight ball. We've got a, a dice roller, hangman. We've got minesweeper, pacman. We've got a puzzle, Simon Says. So that's like a memory game. We've got snake. And we've also got noughts and crosses, or you probably know as tic tac toe. Now, Stream Deck tip number three is probably my single favorite function and plugin for the Stream Deck. It's called, and again, this is from Bar Raider, Windows Mover and Resizer. What this does is at the click of a button you can configure a stream deck button to place any application or window anywhere on your screens now the reason why this is very useful is because when you're first starting streaming you may want to place like your obs in a certain place the game application in another place you might have a browser open and all kinds of different things like that this just speeds up that process of being able to place multiple things and also and we'll get into a bit more detail about this in a second but when you combine windows mover and resizer with the multi-actions and multi-actions switches with delays that can become very very powerful but we'll get into tip four in just a second we're still on tip three you're getting ahead of yourself here machine again this is a plugin so we just need to go to the plugin store and click on plugins again and we're searching for windows mover and resizer it's this plugin here i've already got it installed once installed you'll have these options here windows mover virtual desktop mover and virtual desktop pin it's mainly the windows mover here so we're going to drag it on and all we do is we can configure this now to place certain applications or windows in certain places and again we can customize the button picture if we want to we could choose between a specific application or the currently 
focused window. I've just realized the currently focused window ones clearly used for people that are watching not safe for work things. Somebody walks in their boss, they can just press that button and it moves it onto another screen, right? That's probably what it's used for. We can select the application itself, for example, OBS Studio. And at this point, we can select the different screen that we want it to be displayed on. And we can even set the specific coordinates on that screen to the nearest pixel. It's really, really powerful. We can resize it if we want, or we can just have it maximized or minimized. And there's a few other little settings here that are quite cool, including the number of retry attempts in case it doesn't work first time. Now, if you're interested in more of Bar Raider's Stream Deck app, if you go to barraider.com, you'll be able to scroll through all of the different applications he's got. We're going to cover one or two more in this video, but for now, here's a list of some of the other ones just to give you a feel for what is actually available here. He's got a lot of them and he's a great developer. Hey, just real quick, if you're enjoying the video, we'd really appreciate if you could subscribe to the channel or at least give a thumbs up if you're finding it useful. Thanks a lot. Enjoy the video. So tip number four, as alluded, a great tip for the Stream Deck is using multi-actions and multi-action switches. These are just brilliant for optimizing different workflows and processes. It's kind of boring, but when you actually see what some of these things can do, it's absolutely brilliant. So most recently on Twitch, for example, there's been the hate raids. A lot of people set up multi-action switches to do multiple functions with Twitch, for example, enabling emote-only mode or enabling follower-only mode to reduce the likelihood of getting hate raided. What I've chosen to do on mine is actually do a launch routine and on this multi-action switch I've got a load of different things that happen for example placing OBS studio opening OBS studio having delays in here opening Philips hue and turning the lights to purple and even like launching stream manager from twitch from here having a delay and then resizing that onto a different screen using the windows mover and resizer plugin so multi-action switches are super super powerful and it's really the world is your oyster on how you can use these stream deck tip number five and we're on to bar Raider again. This is a Spotify integration. Now, I've actually utilized the wallpaper here to create this logo just so that it looks really nice on my stream deck. And this one here will actually launch Spotify using the system open, which is a default integration. It's a default button on the stream deck. But now I've used Bar Raider's Spotify integration, which will allow me to play songs, skip songs, adjust the volume, and even like certain songs and add them to playlists and things like that. The Spotify plugin from Bar Raider is going to take you five or ten minutes to set up but it is a brilliant plugin i've used it for a long time it's pretty damn responsive and it's really reliable as well but i think you do need to have a premium spotify account for this or at least last time i checked you did need to have that one of my favorite things about this particular plugin is that it pulls the artwork onto the play button here and also the name of the track and the time on the track as well so just that single play and pause button is a really cool button to just have on your stream deck even if you don't have a full dedicated page to it like i do on my stream deck i did say i'd get onto some some more simple tips towards the end of the video. So tip number six is a speed test that you can run from your stream deck at the push of a button. But there are two different ways you can do this and I'll show you both right now. First of all, we can do a search for speed here and the speed test will come up. Again, it's a bar raider one. We're gonna install this. Now we've got this speed test button available here. We'll drag this on. Now when I press this button on my stream deck on the fly, I can just check is my internet okay, which is really, really useful when you're midstream takes a few seconds. Here we can see I've got 807 megabyte download speed and a 52 megabit per second upload speed. And it's also put the time on there as well. Pretty useful. I've found probably one in every 10 streams that I do. Sometimes it feels like the internet's not quite right. So this would be just a really quick way of being able to visually do that. Another way that you can do this is by having a website launcher under the system tab here. Drag this on and have it actually launch a URL to a speed website. For example, Google do speed tests, but also Oop and a number of other different speed tests that you can try. The difference here though is that this will actually launch like your Chrome browser or something like that and will actually run the test in the browser instead so you can see it a little bit more visually but it does mean that it pops out. Tip number seven, a really simple and straightforward one but one that I find really really useful. You've got a utility by Elgato which is a key counter. It literally just tracks the number of times that you press that key. Now Bar Raider does have his version of it so we'll install both and check both of them out here. Now for Bar Raider we've got this one here, Stream 
counter. Now, there's all kinds of uses for this, but you're probably wondering what the main use is. Well, by pressing this button, for example, in a game every time you die or giveaways and things like that, you'll compress it here and it can actually output to a text file. That text file can be read on OBS Studio, which can be pulled onto your stream and displayed somewhere, perhaps as part of your camera overlay or as part of your stream overlays. You just need to make sure that when you're configuring this, that you press these three dots here to set the file name. Otherwise, the text file won't place. But you can also choose exactly where you're going to place the text file. So I'm going to place this on my desktop and call it counter. And now when I press this button, it should go up in increments and place to that text file. There you go. Every single time I press this now, it goes up in increments. And just to check that it's working, I can go onto this counter file here. And it's showing a file of four that can be pulled in as a read-only text file onto OBS Studio or Streamlabs OBS. Just dragging in the Elgato one and doing exactly the same. When I press it, it just straight away works out of the box. The difference here is it's not placing a text file every single time I press that. So that's less useful than the Bar Raider one, but it does get going and start working straight away if you just need a visual indicator of something. So hopefully you guys found those tips useful. If I've missed anything really, really important, drop in the comments below exactly what other tips we should be looking at as well. Have a good day and take care.